Hello, my name is Zé Monteiro. I'm from INESC ID, a research institute in Lisbon, Portugal. One of the tasks we had within the EPIC project was to take an application code and use it as a demonstrator for the technologies being developed in the project. In our case, we used a plasma simulator based on a particle in cell method. Uh, in this talk, I'll briefly describe this method and then I'll present the different uh, porting efforts that we did and the results that we have obtained. So the simulator that we are used, using is based on OSIRIS. OSIRIS is um, a plasma simulator uh, being used by many research institutes worldwide. And it's able to accurately model the processes inside plasmas. Namely, uh, we can model uh, the interaction of uh, particles inside high intensity uh, plasma fields, such as the image on, on the left here. And also it can model uh, lasers going through plasmas as I show here in the picture on the right. And these are actually the two problem instances that we'll be uh, using to uh, show the, the results. So Osiris is based on an electromagnetic particle in cell method. And uh, in this method, the, the simulation space is um, discretized in cells and particles are within a given cell and are subjected to the forces of the electromagnetic fields in that cell. This makes the problem very local and so more easy to, uh, uh, disc to, to, to discretize and, and, and run in parallel. It still is a very uh, computationally intensive um, uh, method and um, we, we have some problems with load balancing sometimes because as particles move from cell to cell, there might be cells that uh, have uh, more computation than, than other cells. So the main simulation loop in this method consists in first uh, going through all the particles and uh, compute the electromagnetic fields at the position of that particle so that we know uh, the forces to which the particle is subject to. From these forces, we uh, compute the new position for the particle and its new momentum. And as particles move, uh, they uh, create an electric current that we need, that, that we then use to uh, compute the new values for the electromagnetic fields. And this ends the, 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 the main simulation loop. And then we can advance to the next time step where we repeat the same process again through all the particles. For EPIC, we departed from uh, ZIPIC, uh, which is, uh, we, we call it the mini app. With ZIPIC has exactly the same functionalities as OSIRIS. So the computational kernel is the same, same level of accuracy, but ZIPIC has been stripped of all particular cases that OSIRIS considers. So it's a much easier um, uh, position to start from uh, for our experiments. So taking a, a sequential version of ZIPIC, we first produced OpenMP and MPI versions. So basically using the, the traditional parallelization approaches. And these optimized versions are those that we're going to use as the basis for the comparison, comparison for the remaining um, uh, portings. We then use uh, OMPS, which is the shared memory programming model being developed by the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Uh, and it's based on, on, on asynchronous uh, tasks. And we also ported ZIPIC to GASPI, which is um, uh, the distributed memory programming model being developed by Fraunhofer in this project. From these implementations, we also combine them and we have produced hybrids that combine OMPS with MPI and OMPS with, with GASP. Finally, we also ported ZIPIC to accelerators such as the GPU and the and FPGA. And um, for these, we also use technologies being developed in the project, such as OMS with uh, OpenACC and OMS with uh, OpenCL. So I'm going to present results for these several uh, uh, implementations, and I'll start 
with uh, the shared memory versions. So basically, we're, we're comparing uh, OpenMP with OMS. And uh, I'm showing here in the picture again the, the main simulation loop. And our first approach in OpenMP was to basically take the main loop that goes through all the particles and, and do a parallel for on, on this loop. Uh, because particles deposit current on the grid, there, there is an issue with the data races. We tried both uh, atomic and reduce, and we realized that the reduced versions were much better than the atomic. So I'm not going to present any results with, with, with Atomic. We then uh, used uh, OMPS, sorry. Um, the, our initial uh, approach to OMPS was the same as OpenMP. Basically, we took the particles uh, loop and used task loop to create tasks for uh, different particles. We then tried to, instead of doing the parallelization in terms of particles, we did a spatial decomposition uh, where we divided the space in rows and defined uh, tasks based on, on rows. And we realized that uh, this type of parallelization was much better than uh, the, 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 the particle parallelization. So we um, also developed an, an OpenMP version based on a, a spatial decomposition. So in OMPS, we uh, define data dependencies so that tasks are only scheduled when uh, the, all the, the previous results have been uh, computed. And we took these data dependencies a little further on. Uh, we tried to avoid the data races by guaranteeing that no adjacent cells were being computed in parallel. And the way we did this was through the in-out parameter where uh, Basically, this, this dependency uh, would prevent adjacent rows from uh, being executing at the same time. Uh, in order to do this, what we did was we first create the odd rows, uh, the tasks with the odd rows, and these can all execute in parallel. That, well, in terms of uh, data races, so there are no, no, no data races. And as they finish uh, the tasks for the even rows can, can start safely again without any um, data races. Moreover, we tried the commutative parameter, with, which adds uh, another level of flexibility uh, because it doesn't matter what is the sequence that the tasks are created because the, the runtime is still able to uh, prevent adjacent cells from uh, being computed in, in parallel. It turns out that the reduced versions were still uh, superior to these uh, versions that avoided the, the dependencies. And um, I'm going to present results mostly for the reduced versions. So here I'm presenting uh, results for four different implementations, which we find are the most significant. And on, on the left, we have the instance where we have a high intensive plasma, which two different particles. And the way that it looks uh, is shown here in the picture below. Uh, and one of the features of this instance is that it's very homogeneous. So uh, it's very well behaved in terms of load balancing. On the right, I'm showing the laser wake field uh, acceleration. And this instance simulates a, a, a laser going through the plasma and opposite to the Weibull version, this one uh, is not well behaved in terms of load balancing because most of the action is actually in the cells where the laser is going through. So here I have these four um, implementations that I'm presenting results for. The green and the red are for OpenMP implementations so that the, the red using the parallelization in terms of particles, the green, the parallelization in terms of, of, of um, uh, special uh, regions. And the blue and the, the orange are for OMPS versions. The difference between these two, uh, the sync version, we have a barrier that uh, waits for all the threads for a given time step to finish before starting the next time step. And the sync version, the orange one, we add 
additional data dependencies that allow tasks from the next time step to start, even if not all the tasks from the previous time step have finished. So we have said that generally all versions have a good enough scalability, uh, but the orange version, which is the completely asynchronous version based on data dependencies, has an excellent uh, scalability. So this is far superior to all the other implementations. If you look at the laser wake field acceleration, uh, the results are similar. Um, the main difference is that the, the composition based on particles uh, it, it does not scale very well. And this has to do with the uh, load balancing problems that are created by uh, the action being concentrated on, on just a few cells. So this, this picture shows the scalability from 12 cores up to 48 cores, which is what's available on a Maranastron uh, computational node. More recently, we had access to the Carolina machine, and this allows us to extend a little bit further our scalability analysis, because we have uh, 128 cores available in a single computational node. So that's what I'm showing here, is the, the Weibull uh, scalability for the, the, the asynchronous version, so that the most efficient version that we have going from um, 32 cores all the way up to 128 cores. And we see that we still have a uh, very nice scalability. This is not the case for the laser wake field acceleration. We, we still see very good scalability up to 64 cores, but not much improvement after that. And this was very recent. We are still looking into what is the main reason why uh, it doesn't scale as well after this point. So the main conclusions here for shared memory is that uh, the, the, the synchronicity uh, that OMS provides with data dependencies allows for a very good uh, scalability. And we have published these results, so we have more details there in a paper that we presented at Europar uh, in, in, in August, in last August. Moving on to the distributed memory implementation, so we're going to compare MPI against GASP. And um, in, in this case, we did a, a checkered board decomposition of the space. And uh, I'm showing here again for the Weibull and the laser wake field acceleration instances, uh, results using GASP and MPI. So this is pure um, um, GASP and pure MPI. So no OMPs no, no or open MPI. And this is on, on my nostrum and I'm showing scalability from one process up to 224 processes. Um, we, we can see that scalability is fairly good and that the results for GASP and MPI are very similar. When we look at the laser wake field, um, the scalability is not so good. And uh, the reason for this is that we have another source of, uh, of load imbalance that is for the laser wake field, the, the laser is incident on one side of the simulation space. So it, it takes some time to arrive at the, the cells in, in the middle and the, uh, the other side of the simulation space. So what we tried was instead of using a checkered board decomposition, we also did a row-wise decomposition similar to the one that we have in shared memory. And uh, we can see that we recover most of the scalability that we had for the Weibull. We extended the scalability analysis furthermore in, in, in Carolina. Uh, so in Carolina, we had more resources available. So we scaled these up to 32K cores. Now, because we are scaling this so much, we can no longer do a strong scaling analysis. So we had to go for a weak scaling analysis, meaning that we were duplicating the simulation space as we uh, duplicate the number of cores. And we can see here that the, the versions GASP, MPI, oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, here we are, I'm, I'm showing results for hybrid versions and MPI is just a full MPI version. But for the hybrid versions, we have very good scalability up to 32K nodes and the results are very similar among uh, the three versions. 
I'm not showing results for the laser wake field acceleration because uh, in this case, weak scaling uh, does not work so well because most of the activity is in a few number of cells. So it doesn't make sense to duplicate the simulation space. So instead I, I'm showing a, another version of WIBO which is lower in intensity, meaning that particles move a lot less. So we have less communication between tasks. And in this case, of course, the, the scalability is even better than, than for the, the Weibull case. So the, the takeaways from this is that we get very similar results between MPI and GASPI. And well, the problem is, even with MPI, the communication overhead was already low, so there is no, no much uh, features from GASPI that we can take advantage of. Then we move to, to accelerators. Uh, I'm going to present results for GPUs and FPGAs. So in this graph, uh, I show uh, a comparison of different implementations compared. So this is speedups over a CPU version running with uh, 40 threads. And the first thing we did was to produce an open ACC version. Uh, I'm sorry, the columns, the green column uh, corresponds to the WIPO case. The, the blue column corresponds to the laser wake field acceleration and the orange corresponds to the warm uh, instance that I just presented in the previous slide. So the initial OpenMP version, uh, sorry, OpenACC version that we produced uh, was not very good. Then we took some time in optimizing this OpenACC version and we got some, then some interesting uh, speedups over a uh, CPU version run with 40 threads. We then produced uh, an open SEC uh, with open ACC uh, version. So this is something that is currently being developed within the project. The main advantage of this version is that um, it's the OMPS runtime that decides uh, when to send tasks to, to the GPU. Uh, and here basically we did two experiments and basically the conclusion is, I'm sorry, um, we have very similar results between a pure OpenACC version and uh, the OMPS managed uh, version. Now, the biggest advantage of OMPS with OpenACC is when we have multiple GPUs. And uh, again, when we had access to Carolina, there are nodes in Carolina that have uh, eight GPUs. So this was very nice for us to do the, our experiments. So I'm showing here um, results from one to eight GPUs. Uh, and we are comparing the pure OpenACC version against the OMPs with OpenACC uh, versions. Uh, we can see uh, on the left that for the Weibull case, um, the scalability is, is, is again, not very nice. For the laser wake field acceleration, um, the, the, the scalability is good up to four GPUs. It, it's not so good from that point on. Again, uh, the reason for this may, may be related to the, the, the strong scaling that we are using. So for Rival, we are able to do weak scaling, as I said, so we duplicate the size uh, when we move to, to twice the number of GPUs. But in LAFA, we cannot do that. So we, we just do a strong scaling and it may happen that after four GPUs, the problem is already uh, small that we can no longer uh, take advantage of more GPUs. In any case, the results are very similar between op the pure uh, OpenACC and the OMPs with OpenACC. Uh, I just want to stress that it's much easier for the programmer to produce a, 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 a program running on multiple uh, GPUs than using pure OpenACC, because in pure OpenACC, it has to be the programmer to decide when to send tasks to which GPU. And in the OMPs with OpenACC, we leave this work to the, the, the runtime. We then um, port ZPIC to OMPS uh, at uh, OpenCL, and I show here results 
for this implementation running on a GPU and running on an FPGA. We can see that for this version, we have very good results on the GPU, but not as good uh, when running on, on an FPGA. So we're not successful in importing ZPIC to the FPGA. We also compared the energy consumption of ZPIC running on the CPU versus the GPU and the FPGA. And we can see on the left that while the application is running, indeed, uh, the CPU is uh, the device that uh, has higher power consumption, followed by the GPU very close. And then the, the least power consumption, consumption uh, device is uh, the FPGA by a large margin. But when we take into account the total time to, to, to get solution, um, then uh, the CPU is where we waste more energy to do the computation and the GPU is the most efficient device. So although it has higher power consumption because it is so fast producing the result, the total energy is, is lower than with the, the FPGA that although has less power consumption, takes a very long time to produce the result. So uh, we believe we have uh, validated the OMPS with uh, OpenECC uh, effort that we were doing in, within the EPIC project. Uh, we have already published uh, some preliminary results. Uh, um, well, it has been accepted. We're going to present this in, uh, in April in PPOPP, and we are uh, working on a full paper uh, to uh, present the, 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 these results. I'd just like to finish with some uh, discussion about productivity. Um, so here I'm comparing uh, OpenMP and OMPS, and I'm, I'm going to use lines of code for this. So uh, in terms of lines of code, the OpenMP version is very similar to the OMPS version, and we do get higher speedups uh, using OMPS. So we believe this indicates that with about the same effort, um, the tasking description that we do with OMPS uh, leads or has the same effort, although it leads to, to better uh, performance. When we look at uh, OpenACC against, uh, pure OpenACC against OMPS plus OpenACC, again, the number of lines of code is similar. The results are similar. Um, but we, in our uh, experience, the, the lines of code in pure OpenACC are harder because we have to do the management ourselves and decide when to send different tasks to each uh, GPU. Finally, when comparing MPI and GASPI, um, remember that this tool, we had very uh, similar performance for these implementations. And we do have much more lines of code in GASPI than, than MPI. So GASPI is significantly more verbose than MPI. And in our case, uh, we were not able to exploit, namely the one-sided communication feature of, of GASPI because uh, in our application, um, the amount of communication was not the biggest uh, hurdle. So um, in our case, GASPI, uh, does not compensate over, over MPI. And those are the results that I had to present. Uh, thank you for your attention.